The C and C++ languages require you as the software engineer to manage your own dynamic memory. Languages such as Java and Python, these languages have garbage collection in them, which means you can allocate things on the heap and rely upon the compiler and the runtime environment to clean up after you. Basically, re deleting things, getting rid of memory that you are not using. That's not the case again with C and C++. It's not hard to deal with dynamic memory if we use discipline in our development. Typically what we would like to see as we develop code is whenever we allocate memory we immediately figure out where it's going to be freed and we set up our timeline in such a way that we always know where memory is being allocated and where it is being freed at. If we work that way it tends to be not a tremendously difficult problem to deal with dynamic memory allocation. But there also are some tools that can help us with detecting when we have problems in our code. One of these tools is Valgrind, and this tutorial is going to show you a little bit of how you can go about using Valgrind to help debug potential memory leaks in code. So the program we are going to debug is a pretty straightforward program here. What we have is essentially a prompt to the user to enter a string on the console. We read that string into a buffer that is allocated on the stack. We malloc some space for a capital and a lowercase version of that string, and this should actually say cap string like so. And we convert the string to uppercase and lowercase appropriately, printing them out. And last but not least, we free the memory. Now this right here is one of the first memory leaks that you're going to see. If you go with the approach of every time you have a malloc, there should be a free, here's where I'm mallocing cap string. Oh, it's not freed. Definitely a memory leak there. If I look at LC string, here's where it's being malloc, there it's being freed. So from just inspecting the code, I can see that I've got a memory leak of this cap string. But I want to demonstrate to you with a tool how we can actually see this occurring. To verify that the program works right, I just want to run it and show you that it does actually execute properly. This is a test message. So if we're just looking for functionality right now, we would say that this program is working properly. The initial string is printed out, the cap string and the lowercase string are all printed out to the console. But what's happening is we actually are leaking memory inside of this program when it runs. Leaking memory is bad, especially if you have a program that runs for a long period of time. Ultimately, if you leak too much memory, your program will end up crashing. So how can we detect leaks? Well, there is a tool here called Valgrind. Valgrind, basically it's a suite of tools that allows us to debug and profile programs. There are a ton of different options that are available to you here, as you can see from the man page. And depending on what you're trying to do, you may want to use one set of options or another set of options. I'm going to show you the very basic behavior of Valgrind to begin with. So what I want to do is take this program that I have created here, and I'm going to run it. Valgrind to capital demonstration. So this is the first test case that I'm going to run here. I'm just going to run the program with no fancy options or anything passed in the Valgrind. And it's going to run. Please enter a string on the console. This is a test message like so. And it will run through here and ooh, we see that the heap summary in use at exit was 49 bytes in two blocks. There were five allocs, three frees. Now if we think about it, an alloc is an allocation of memory. That occurred five times. We only close freed code three times. Five minus three, two blocks are left, not al or still allocated when the program exits, which is these two blocks here, giving us, in this program's case, 49 bytes being lost. Now, I can go a little bit farther into this to see where this is actually going, get a little bit more 
information about what's going on here. It's giving us some details here that may tell us about. Let's run this here with a little bit more substantial options. I'm going to do minus minus leak check equals full, which is essentially what it recommends as a little bit more advanced way of detecting leaks. So here we go. I run it this way. This is a test message. And what we can see is one of the bytes that was lost here, the malloc occurred at this address, VG replace malloc. Now this is down inside of an operating system library. This was invoked from convert strings to caps, C line 27, called in to capital demonstration dot C line 42. So this right here is the stack leading up to where the allocation that essentially was never freed occurred at. The other one I can look at here is this scenario here. Main, I'm going to fix this one first. So main.c line 36. Let's go to line 36 here. Line 36 is right here. This is the cap string. This is the one that was pretty obvious. I pointed out earlier that it was a memory leak because I could see that it was being allocated here but not being freed. So what I'm going to do is go free LC string like so. And let's see what happens. So I'll build the project. And I will then rerun it again with that same option. I'm going to This is a test. Oh, but we see that we're still getting 33 bytes being used. Hmm. Okay, main convert string to caps malloc definitely lost here to capital demonstration. Ah, okay, so. Here's an interesting thing. Why is there any code being malloc in two capital demonstration? Let's take a look at what's going on in that code. So that's part of the case conversion utilities here. And what we see is two caps. Oh, it actually, if we look at the return here, allocates space for the return string inside of it. So this destination string that's passed in as a parameter is never used in this particular case. So what's happening is, if we think in the bigger picture of things, it convert strings to caps, which is called right here. This parameter is never being used here. This malloc here is never being used. Now what happens is, this pointer here gets overwritten by the return value from there. That's a problem. If that gets overwritten by the return value from there, then what ends up happening is this memory allocation here is lost. It's not going to be recoverable. And I see why I didn't fix one of them, because I put the wrong free there of the cap string. So now what will happen is, is as I build this, I can go, should be able to go through and run it here. This is a test, like so. And we're seeing one block now being lost. And it is the block that is malloc in main. And that again is because this particular method here is malloc-ing memory and not actually using this destination string. That's different in implementation than how this convert string to lowercase is handling. You notice this one here, there is no malloc. It's actually using this destination string. You have to pay attention to the comments here. So you notice here, this method will allocate space for the return string. In all reality, this parameter here probably doesn't need to be here. So I can take 
if I don't need that parameter, because I'm going to allocate it, I can remove that parameter like so. Of course, then I have to go into the H file over here and get rid of the destination parameter like so. And of course, I should be updating the comments while I'm doing this as well. And then I can get rid of that parameter here. But the other thing I can do is I no longer need to perform that malloc right there because it's actually going on inside of the library code that's returning that value. So paying attention to library codes, seeing where there are, looking at the comments, all of those things are important when we are trying to debug these memory leaks. Running the code now, if all goes well and good, this is a test. We see that I have zero bytes in use at exit. All of the freeze and allocations line up. We're in good shape. That's going to bring this video to a close.